Right, so this year I've kind of been spreading the message that yes, you should be buying Apple refurbished because the condition is basically like new. And I want to continue spreading that message because today we have a refurbished iPad Pro to check out. And I'm pretty excited for this because this is actually my first time reviewing the bigger size. I've been primarily interacting and using 11 inch iPads. That's been the go-to size for me, but today I want to see how the bigger size is. And why I want refurbished is because this is actually the A12Z iPad Pro, not the M1 model. And yes, some of you might be wondering, why did I not go for the M1? Well, it's a simple reason, guys. The M1 is hella expensive. Remember with M1, the bigger size got mini LED, which came with a price increase. And so because of that, the M1 model is still floating around for 800, 900 pounds, whereas this is under 600 pounds. And so yeah, basically it's a no brainer for me to go with this, especially when I don't care about mini LED or the M1 because I'm literally just using this iPad to watch YouTube and Netflix on. And so yes, I do wanna test the bigger size and see how it is. And by the way, would like to remind you guys, like this video and subscribe for more content like this. It would be appreciated. So let's get into the packaging. And as you can see, it's basically brand new. The only difference is of course, there is no graphic on the front. It just says iPad Pro and refurbished. Now, one thing I do hate is that they haven't moved to the pull tabs with the refurbished products. They're still using plastic, which I don't like. But anyways, let's rip this open. Right, so here we go, guys. Let's pull on this. Oh, what a flop. <laughs> okay, uh, let me get some sort of sharp object, I guess. Okay, since the pull tab failed, let's actually rip this open like this with my uh, ejector tool. There we go. Sorry if I'm taking forever with this unboxing, but you know, it's nice to go steady and slow. You know, we don't have to rush this unboxing experience. Anyways, there we go. Should open now, so let's shake the box. Here we go. Shake, 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 shake. Uh, okay. Oh, there we go. Take this out of the way. And here is, ooh, the 12.9 inch. First time interacting with this. Sorry if I <laughs> hit the tripod there, but uh, wow, that's got some heft to it. Obviously I got it in space gray because that was the only color available. If you know me on this channel, I'm actually a fan of silver, but unfortunately silver was not available, but that's fine. I can live with space gray, but let's put this to the side. Checking the contents, we have the usual pamphlets that no one ever reads. Uh, there should be Apple sticker here, hopefully. Is there? Why can't I? I always struggle when taking the Apple sticker out, but uh, there we go. Yep, it's there. It's massive, but it's there. And also we have new accessories inside the box. So that's a USB-C, that's a 20 watt adapter, sorry. And that's the USB-C cable. So very nice, very normal packaging. That's basically what you come to expect with all Apple products. It's the same for refurbished. Let's now get into the iPads. Right, so here we have the 12.9 inch. It feels incredibly thin. I'm kind of scared of bending it, but anyways, let's rip this open. And here we go. 12.9 inch. Let me... Uh... Oh, it's just gonna slide out. Wait, okay, this is massive. Um, I need to try and get it out without... So I don't want to get the screen dirty immediately. It does come with some fingerprints <laughs> pre-installed. Great. Apart from that, everything else looks perfectly fine. I'll put some close-up images for you guys on the screen. But yeah, I've examined this. It looks brand new as one expects with Apple refurbished. So let's now power this on and see how the screen is. First time interacting with this size. It is hefty, I can't lie. I was kind of underestimating how heavy this was gonna be, but I also do like the additional real estate, it's quite nice. Again, I have to test it and see how it is in terms of regular usage. And there we go, hello. 
Let me set this up off screen, guys, and then we'll do some testing. Also, just want to say, are parents actually buying this for children? Imagine being a 10 year old with a 12.9 inch iPad. That's the ultimate flex. Oh, I completely forgot this has Face ID. I've actually been used to Touch ID on the air, but. Ooh, I might test that out later. We'll see. But for now, we'll set up later. Just skipping everything possible because I just want to test this quickly. Dark modes. Actually, auto. Auto is the way to go. And boom, we are in the iPad. And oh my God, so much real estate. Anyways, we can't check battery off on the device directly, unfortunately. I still don't understand why the iPad does not support that. But of course, I can plug this into battery off and I'll give you guys an update on the screen right now. But I do want to check out if we got the exact device ordered. Let's see. Yeah, fourth generation 12.9 inch iPad Pro. Boom. Now, the main thing I want to test right now are speakers. How are the speakers on this bigger size? I'm assuming the speakers are going to be amazing. But of course, let's try it out right now. Now, ideally, I do want to play music, but I can't because copyrights a thing. And so let's play one of my videos. Right, so here we go. Let's put the sound up. Now, you're probably wondering at this point, when exactly could it launch? Well, thankfully, we do have some new tidbits, but I do want to emphasize specifically when it comes to iPad rumors. Take all of this with a humongous grain of salt. As I said, we were led on by leaks just a few weeks ago, but... Pretty bassy, I can't lie. Now, I'll be honest, I think I'm a little spoiled by the MacBook speakers. The 14-inch blew my mind, and this in comparison obviously doesn't sound as good. But for iPad speakers, there is a lot of bass, and obviously, that is one of the advantages of the bigger size. Now, it's been a few days with this iPad, and of course, I'm sure many of you guys might be wondering about the Achilles heel of this iPad, which is the ATOV Z. I feel like many dismiss these models because they don't have the M series chipset, but honestly, I don't think Apple offers enough software features on those models that justify the upgrades. I feel like those who will benefit from having M1 or M2 on the iPads are using those as laptop replacements, but there is a large majority of consumers who just use the iPads as iPads. It's purely a tablet for consuming content on, or of course, checking on social media. So for that purpose, you're really not gonna benefit much from getting a more expensive iPad. When it comes to regular usage, the A12Z iPad still performs like a champ. It has a similar configuration to M1 with eight CPU cores and eight GPU cores. And whilst it does fall under the A12 family of chips, this being the Z variant means it's closer in performance to the A14, which is still a very decent chipset. That's what Apple's using right now with the iPad 10. There's also six gigs of RAM here, so it's plenty fine when multitasking. And yeah, I really have no complaints performance wise. Anyways, thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. And on that note, I'll see you guys in the next one.